Good morning and welcome to worship this morning, the fourth Sunday of Easter. What a joy it is to gather to worship God, to hear God's word, and to pray together and to join in that holy meal of Holy Communion. As you came in, for those who are gathered here in the sanctuary, you should have received a uh, 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 juice or wine plus a wafer. If you're gathering with us over Facebook Live from home, you're welcome to go get bread or a cracker, juice or wine so that you might join with us in communion. I'll give instructions about communion when we get closer to that time. If you're worshiping with us for the first time or the first time in a while, a special welcome to you. We'd love to get to know you more. We encourage you to contact the church office or to visit our website for ways to connect with us. In this season of Easter, we are focusing on the way of love practice of go. How we go out across highways and byways, how we cross over boundaries to share the good news of God's love. Today is also Good Shepherd Sunday, so we get to delve into those texts of how we are God's sheep. Friends, if you are willing to serve as a worship helper, we would need your help. Uh, We are looking for more ushers, temperature checkers, readers, um, and backup sound and video. If you are interested in any of these opportunities, please let me know so that we can connect you and train you and get you into that way of service. With those announcements, we'll prepare our hearts for worship by listening to the prelude. Please stand as you are able for the thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. 
Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts as we remember our baptism. Give us renewal through repentance and faith in your word, especially as we pause at this font to confess our sin and ask your forgiveness. Through these waters, our sins are forgiven. God remembers them no more. Wash us through and through, God, that a new person may come forth and rise up to live before you in righteousness and holiness forever. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the first song. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Friends, today as we spend time with God's Word, we have two questions to carry with us in our meditation. We are, I'm wondering, what does it feel like to be nourished? And what does it feel like to be found? Not lost, but found. So we continue reflecting, and we continue with the Word of God, with the prayer of the day. So pray with me. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us, and we shall be satisfied. Heal us, and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So for our children's time today, we uh, are continuing to celebrate and draw out our Easter joy. And one of the ways that we continue to celebrate our mark the joy of Easter is by noticing all those ways Jesus is with us in a In the stories this week, we hear the story, which was again one of those moments. Jesus uh, had something to say to the disciples. They, they, they said, "Oh, Jesus, what?" And and maybe they didn't understand. It, but as time went on, they remembered it, and it's one of the stories that they passed down to us, in which um, a powerful kind of resonance in our relationship with God, and so. Here we have this story that helps us celebrate how Jesus is with us in new ways, right? They walked with him everywhere he went. He did such amazing things and such wonderful things. Sometimes they would say to him, who are you? And one time he said to them, I'm the good shepherd. I know each of my sheep by name. 
And they know the sound of my voice, and they follow me everywhere I lead them. And I lead them to the good green grass. And I lead them to the cold, clear water. And at the end of the day, I bring them back to the sheepfold. And if one of them is missing, I leave the group and I go out to find that lost sheep. Even in those dangerous places, I lead them and they know the sound of my voice. And when I find that one that's missing, I bring it home on my shoulders. And I bring out my friends. And I say, friends, the one that was lost has been found. We must celebrate. Jesus told them, I am the good shepherd. I know each of my sheep by name. And they know the sound of my voice. And so as we hear that story today, we think... What does it feel like to be nourished? What is my good green grass? What is my cold, clear water? What did it feel like when I was found? And of course, as we continue to think about going, we realize that we can feed others too, that we can nourish others too. And that we can help find others. And so we do both those, all those things today we carry with us as we hear the stories, as we sing the songs, and as we go from here to nourish and to find and to bring people this love. So friends, we continue our reflection with the first reading. The first reading for today is from 1 John chapter 3. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them the hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep i am the good shepherd i know my own and my own know me just as the father knows me and i know the father and i lay down my life for the sheep i have other sheep that do not belong to this fold i must bring them also 
and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Every year on the fourth Sunday of Easter, we delve into these texts with this image of the good and true and trustworthy shepherd. And we acknowledge that we are God's sheep. Every year we do this. And somehow this year, when I was planning for this service a month or so ago, I thought we could do this service without those words of the 23rd Psalm. And then... I just couldn't do it. Truth be told, I don't know what I was thinking. But actually, I guess I do know what I was thinking. I was thinking that we want to keep this service short so that we keep everyone safe and less exposed in this time of pandemic. And I was thinking we just have to have the gospel because the gospel. And I was thinking that these texts from 1 John are so rich that we must include them too, especially as we focus on this practice of go. Going out across boundaries and barriers to share the good news of God's love, of Christ laying down his life and taking it back up again in the resurrection. I was thinking about all the ways we are called to go to love not just in word or speech, but in truth and action. I was thinking about how we are called to lay down our lives for one another. I was thinking about doing, and I was forgetting to start with being. But we can't start with doing. We have to start with who we are. With being, we have to start with who we are and how we are loved. We are sheep, sheep of the Good Shepherd, and we are loved, so very loved. We are sheep. And as sheep, we are tended to, not by a hired hand who will run away at the first sign of danger or distress, who leaves us to the wolves disappearing when we need him most. No, we are tended by the good, true, trustworthy shepherd who stays with us in times of distress, who walks with us in the valley of the shadow of death, whose rod and staff keep the evils that threaten us at bay and pull us back from the brink of disaster. Wolves have no power here. Evil, death, and fear have no power here. We are led to green pastures. We are led to still waters because we are tended sheep. I learned this past week that there is a difference between a sheepfold and a flock. A fold, as you might say, makes sense after you hear it, is a penned in group of sheep, a folded in group of sheep, while a flock are the sheep that the shepherd tends to out in the field, in the wilderness, 
with no fencing or pen or containment, often we feel like part of the fold, part of that tended group of sheep in that safe pen. But this past year, though, when our pen of this building and sanctuary and things as we've known it have not been possible to live as we used to, we've been more like the flock, haven't we? Out there in that wilderness, in the unknown, away from our safe spaces, out there with the sheep of God's flock, some who might even not know yet that they are part of God's flock. And after a year like this, Never more so have I needed to remember, and perhaps you have needed to remember as well, how well and how thoroughly and how completely and steadfastly we are tended by a strong, never-failing good shepherd, both when we are in the fold and when we were out in the flock. We are sheep. And as sheep, we are known. And we, in turn, know the shepherd. I heard a story this past week about a shepherd whose sheep were stolen out of their pen while he was away. And he received an anonymous tip that the shepherd in another county was the one who had taken his sheep. And so when the county fair time came, which was a couple weeks away, he was going to go and see the sheep of that other farmer and claim his sheep. And he was asked, can you really tell your sheep from other sheep? Can you really tell that they are yours? And in short, he could. To us non-shepherds, all sheep, well, they look a bit the same, don't they? But to a shepherd, they are unique, individual, their characteristics known and appreciated, like how I could pick out my dog from a million other dogs who looked very similar to him, or how I could pick out my babies from the whole world full of other babies. We are known like that. We are known We are sheep, and as sheep, we are loved, so deeply, truly loved. No one has greater love than this, than one lays down one's life for one's friends. These words are still to come in the Gospel of John, but the stage is set for them in these words we have before us this day. Jesus, the good shepherd, lays down his life for us, his sheep. We know that story. We know of the death Jesus underwent on the cross. We know that in love, Jesus laid down his life for us of his own will and accord. And he laid down his life so he could take it back up again so that the joy and gift of the resurrection could come to us, so that Jesus could ascend and draw all people to himself, so that the Holy Spirit could come to us all. All this could come with that first step, that first step of Jesus laying down his life, and out of deep love, Jesus willingly took that first step. We are sheep. We are loved. Friends, we are called. Called to go. Called to love in truth and action. Called to lay down our lives. But before we get to that doing, we must know first who we are. We are, all of us, known, loved. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not be in want. Thanks be to
Sunday of Easter, we pray with the church throughout the earth and for all those in need. God of goodness, we pray for the church. We pray that bishops, pastors, deacons, lay leaders be upheld in their tasks as shepherds of your flock. And that congregations persevere in the ministries of nurture of the young and care for the aging. O oh God, steadfast shepherd of this church and all churches, we pray, abide with us in love. We pray for the members of other world religions that there be an end to interreligious strife, and especially today that Sikhs be comforted in their sorrow, and that during Ramadan, Muslims be strengthened for lives of prayer and service. God, O oh gracious keeper of many flocks, we pray, abide with us in love. We pray for the earth that green pastures and clear waters be provided for herds and flocks, those raised for human use and those living wild, and that farm fields be saved from storm or drought. O oh God, mighty preserver of the universe, we pray, abide with us in love. We pray for the nations of the earth and that governments cease aggression against their neighbors, that peace come to Afghanistan, Syria, Myanmar, China and Russia and the United States find ways to coexist in concord with each other. O oh God, the true cornerstone of our society, we pray, abide with us in love. We pray for justice in our land and that our criminal justice system continue to be reformed, that ethnic and economic prejudices cease their hold uh, over people, and that there be peace in our streets. O oh God, almighty judge of righteousness, we pray, Abide with us in love. We pray for those who are hungry, the unemployed, the underemployed, those living in refugee camps or on our own streets, migrants seeking a better life. Oh God, benevolent table of food and fellowship, we pray, abide with us in love. And we pray for all who are sick and suffering today, for those stricken with coronavirus, especially in India and in Brazil. And for the children who have known continual sorrow. And for all those we name in our hearts. O oh God, healer of every ill, we pray, abide with us in love. We praise you, O oh Lord, for the sheep of your fold, each lamb of your own flock. And especially today, we remember the evangelist Mark, the namesake of this community and the writer of that gospel book of faith. Bring us with all the saints to dwell with them in your house forever. O God, eternal giver of life, we pray, abide with us in love. And in the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, we pray today. Amen. Friends, the peace of Christ be with you all. And we invite you to share a sign of peace safely with your neighbors. Peace.
this time we give thanks for all the ways that you give of your time, talents, and resources to help tend the sheep of this fold and the flock of God that is out in the world. Let us pray to bless those gifts. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, we gather around this table. Those who are joining us here in the sanctuary, you'll want to find your uh, juice or wine and wafer. Those who are gathering with us online, now is the time to collect your cracker or bread, juice or wine. I will say the words of institution. As I do that in that dialogue at the beginning, the cantor will speak those words that you are so used to speaking, but you may say them in your heart. Then after the words of institution, we'll hear the Lord's Prayer sung for us and meditate on those words in our hearts. And then I'll invite you to taste and see that the Lord is good, and we'll partake in the bread together, made body, and the wine or grape juice made blood together as well. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. Gathered into one, let us hear the words of the Lord's Prayer song. To this table. Come, eat and be satisfied. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us, and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Beloved sheep of God's fold, God bless you and keep you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.